Das ist ein Let's do it. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Delighted to have you join us here today. We gather in the name of Lord Jesus Christ to celebrate. Our series continues today on the series following Easter. And today we're thinking about the boundless love of Jesus, a love that knows no bounds and never fails. In the words of Jesus himself, as the Father has loved me, so have I have loved you. Remain in my love, John 15 verse 9, for a precious invitation we have been given to remain in the love of our Saviour. Roddy is coming to share with us today. I'm really looking forward to hearing from him. I am. So whether you are joining us for the first time or have been part of the community for a while, or even joining us online, we welcome you with open arms. May this time together be a place where you encounter the love of Jesus in a profound and life-changing way. As we worship and fellowship together, let us encourage one another to abide in the love of Jesus, knowing that in him we find true joy, peace and fulfilment. We're grateful also for your contributions to the ministry and worship here. So you can pop any donations into the office slot in the boyer or bank accounts. And thank you to everybody who does help support the ministry that way. Once again, welcome to our service. May God's love surround you today and always. So let's stand and greet each other before we continue in song.
you one more time. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from
majesty and holiness. You are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, holy forevermore. Your holiness surpasses all understanding. Your righteousness shines brighter than a thousand suns. We thank you for your presence with us today and that you are worthy of all praise and honour. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's be seated as we continue in prayer. At times we aren't so good at loving God, loving our neighbours and loving ourselves. So let's pause and consider those things that separate us from God's love. So happy are those whose sins are forgiven, whose wrongs are pardoned. I will confess my sins to the Lord. I will conceal my wrongdoings. Let's take a moment with God. God forgives and heals us. Together we say, We need your healing, merciful God. Give us true repentance. Some sins are plain to us. Some escape us. Some we cannot face. Forgive us. Set us free to hear your word to us. Set us free to serve you. that they may remain in the love of your Son, Jesus Christ. You know each one immediately. Lord, and you know the trials and challenges that they face. May your love surround them like a protective shield, guiding their steps and comforting their souls. For those we may know who are struggling to feel your presence, Lord, we pray that you would make your love known to them. Help them to experience the depth of your love in tangible ways, reassuring them of your constant care and faithfulness. For those who are facing difficult circumstances, Lord, we ask for your strength to uphold them. Let your love be the anchor in the midst of the life storms, reminding them that you are always with them, ready to carry their burdens and ease their sorrows. For those that may be wandering away from you, Lord, we pray for a gentle tug on their hearts, drawing them back into the warmth of your love. Help them to see that your love is unconditional and that you long for them to return to you with open arms. May your Holy Spirit work mightily in the lives of those we lift up to you. Lord, leading them deeper into the love of Jesus, use us, Lord, as an instrument of your love, that we may support and encourage them along their journey of faith. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers and for your unfailing love that never lets us go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So our reading today is on love. Surprise, surprise. Um, so let's read together. John 15, 9 to 17. Just as the Father has loved me, I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. In the same way, I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that you will have the same joy I have. I also want your joy to be complete. Here is my command, love one another just as you have loved you. No greater love, sorry, let's start the one again. No one has greater love than the one who gives their life for their friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I do not call you slaves anymore. Slaves do not know their master's business. Instead, I call you friends. I have told you everything I have learned from my Father. Do not choose me, instead I chose you 
I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit that will last. I also appointed you so that the Father will give you what you ask for. He will give you whatever you ask for in my name. Here is my command. Love one another. Rod has given us a great question to think about. What does love one another mean to you? Take some time with the people around and see what you are thinking together. So have some time together and we'll see what you can think. This page is a screw. <laughs> I'm glad I numbered them. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We've got a couple of moments. Is anyone willing to share in a really loud voice what you have been discussing? No matter what, love the other person more than yourself. So no matter what, love the other person more than yourself? Yep. Yep. Anyone else? It's in the mind as much as it's anywhere else? Yep. Yep, go. So we're all family together. Yep, we're all for each other, hundred percent, like that. There was another hand, Sue Joy. <laughs> Listening to each other, respecting each other, caring for each other, and doing things for each other. So conflict resolution as well. I think, yeah, that's a good one as well. I've got two hands here. I'll go Steve first, then Beres. So we need to love ourselves before sometimes we can love others. That's a good point. Steve? Give me a meaning. Speak their language. Speak their language. Yeah, I mean, we so, not just language, personality types, there's an awful lot of different ways that we don't connect, isn't there? So, yeah, it's a good one. So, Rod is somewhere. We're going to get Rod to come up and share for, with us. Um, As he comes, let me pray for him. So we thank you for the gift of Rod's voice and message today that you've placed in his heart to share. Grant him your wisdom and guidance as he uh, helps us to hear his message today. Amen. Uh, Morning, church. This is probably a surprise to you, certainly a surprise to me. It's a great pleasure uh, uh, to be able to express some things and I hope that uh, it provides some use to you. Before, as a way of starting, um, Heather, my wife and I, we came to COTS about three, a bit over three, three and a half years ago. Uh, and that we came from a very small and unusual church where we'd been for 30 years, both in Australia and here. And so we were both somewhat 
apprehensive. Um, me less so because I grew up in the Anglican Church, but for Heather it was so totally new. Um, so it's a way of starting to say how we as a community express and demonstrate our love for those who come for the very first time. And I'd like to acknowledge Claire because, uh, Claire, you were wonderful for us. You helped us immediately feel comfortable, connect to others. So thank you. Last week, we heard this sense of Jesus is the vine, this picture of a garden. Um, and the indication in those verses was that if we remain connected to Jesus as the vine, we have a chance of bearing fruit, whatever that fruit might be. And God, in this sense of a garden, is the gardener. Interesting concepts. The verses today lead us into this sense that as Jesus loved his Father, so too he loved us. I merely thought trying to imagine what Jesus' love is. And it drew me immediately to the story of the cross. So Jesus, being the Son of God, had options. <laughs> Who else would have those options? And knew what was in front of him and what was going to be presented to him and the suffering he was going to endure and the death on the cross. He knew all of that. And I'm thinking, why would you not be tempted to take a different path? Because he would have the power to do that. But he did not. For his love of his father and his love for us. So just imagine someone moving into a situation that was knowingly going to cause so much grief and pain and anguish, but to continue to do so because of their love. So that, I think, speaks a bit about the magnitude of Jesus' love and we have an opportunity to remain in his love. But there are a couple of conditions. One is we love one another. I don't know about you, but when I think about loving one another, this is a whole range of different types of love and it changes over the course of your life. Some of us who now are no longer young have a, a lot more years to reflect on about how over our course of life we've experienced love, we've given love, we've learned from the mistakes we've made in trying to do that. We've got love of couples, of married couples, of parents to children, grandparents to grandchildren, love amongst us as a community, as other communities, as workplaces, friends and strangers. And sometimes for some it can feel like I'm not feeling loved because I don't look like you or I don't speak like you or I'm from a country that you're not. So how we overcome those potential barriers is important. I could give you maybe a couple of examples of love, a contrasting picture. Uh, Heather and I knew this close friend for a long time. In fact, uh, he, he uh, and I went to primary school together and we had our kids around. I've got two daughters and one son. So our daughters were around about the same age. As I'm thinking about eight to ten at this point in time. So uh, she knocked on our door one early morning, um, almost unable to stand. She was so distressed. They were seemingly in a loving relationship, loving one another and loving their children. But it turns out that she had just learned that it had, her husband had been cheating on her for the last eight or nine years, some of whom were her girlfriends. You could just imagine the devastation and the dismantling of trust for her. And for her at that time, it was a matter of trying to survive so her heart closed because of the injury that was done to her in seemingly what was a loving relationship. Unfortunately, in this country and many others, we've got many examples of people in positions of authority or power, including within the church, 
have taken that power and abused it by abusing children. The current commission in New Zealand is a testament of how love could go so wrong. So maybe loving one another is not so straightforward. An opposite example, somewhat embarrassing one for me, um, I'm an Aussie bloke, so usually uh, if someone says, how are you, my immediate response is, yeah, I'm fine, I'm okay, irrespective of what's been happening. Because I've learned that most people, when they say, oh, how are you, they're not expecting you to spend five minutes telling you the details around what happened in the last week and how distressed you might be. They just don't want to know. So that's a question for us in our community, if we're wanting to be a loving community, is when we ask those questions, are we prepared to listen to the answer? It's a cultural introduction, discussion, but it could lead and mean so much more. Anyway, knowing that a bit about me, I'm fine, irrespective of what's going on, because my parents tried to bring me up as a tough Aussie bloke, and I interpreted that as Aussie blokes don't really show much emotion. Although we do feel some things some of the time. So uh, around about January, well, January this year, um, I decided to buy a puppy. Um, so uh, we were going down the whole family, so 14 of us, uh, my three adult kids, their family, so seven grandchildren, were heading to this house, holiday house in Waipu Beach. And the people that I was looking at pups to buy one were in Waipu. So we all lobbed on this property and picked out a pup and we were, I was going to pick him up at the end of the holiday. It just happened to be my birthday that day. So we had dinner, birthday cake, celebrations, and I don't get presents now because I've clearly said I've got enough stuff. So we've done things together as a family because that's actually quite special. That's part of loving one another, doing things together, spending time. So what happened was, surprisingly to me, and these dogs, they cost a bit, you know, you don't get much change out of $2,000. So we were out, in the, out in the, on the deck. I was thinking we were just having a chat. My son stood up and said, oh, Dad, um, here's half the money. They've, they raised this amount of money as an expression of love to me. I burst out in tears. I was so embarrassed. Nothing to be embarrassed about. I was emotional because, you know, this saying, love touches the heart. And our hearts can be a whole mixture of things. It can hold a whole range of things. And that's part of what loving one another can do. It can inject sometimes discomfort, but it can be incredibly healing. The other aspect of a bit of a challenge around loving one another is the other part of that is Jesus saying, love one another as I love you. Now that is a big challenge, as I love you. How many of us have some notion of, I love you, but actually I'm expecting some things in exchange? There's often that human dynamic, is there not? Loving comes with maybe some conditions, to me, that's just nowhere near the, what I imagine Jesus' love is. It just seems to be so deeply and generously offered. So I'm sort of taking that as a work in progress for me, to be able to aspire as Jesus is a model of loving fully, aspire to be able to learn by trying testing, feedback, all those things to improve. Reflecting on that, getting prepared for today, took me to then imagining, so that's the love of Jesus. What is the love of God? The Father. We know he loves us. What does that mean? I'd like you for a moment, just where you're sitting, just to imagine being immersed in this magnificence of God's love. Just this immense love surrounding you, dropping into you, 
being immersed in God's love, sinking this sense of being immersed, being filled. I think it's my experience that if we don't feel loved ourselves, our well of love is a little bit empty or dry. And it's probably easier to f love, which is a gesture out. If you feel like your tank is full, your well is full, and if for whatever circumstances it's not quite so full, it, there's a tendency to hang on a little bit. I've met people who felt like their well is empty and they are really challenged and it's such a courageous gift for them if they, from that emptiness, give you something. And if you think about a water filling a well, you know, all of us have a history, yeah? Some of us a longer history than others. And along the path of our lives, typically there are things that have injured us. It's just part of life. Some more so than others. So I'm thinking those injuries, if we weren't able to fully resolve them, they become logs, sticks, stones, rocks in this well of love because they are all, all part of what we think, all part of who we are, all part of the sense of loving. So if you imagine that as being a well of water and sometimes all this stuff, sometimes we refer to it as baggage, all sits within us and it gets in the way of us feeling able to fully, cleanly, clearly, without any expectation to love because it needs to traverse all of that stuff that's within us which I think adds to the challenge. So loving God, I think, is a challenge too around this sense of being immersed as well as helping us, each of us, to clear the water, enabling to love more cleanly, clearly and lovingly. Uh, led me to then thinking about, so if that's God's love, what part does God play, has played in my life, is playing in my life? How the heck do I know? I don't profess to hear a voice speaking to me. Sometimes I have thoughts and ideas that mm, might have come from God. And I'm really glad, I don't think this is a competition between us. We're not going to say, um, who's got the best relationship with God? Put your hand up. You know, we're not going to do that, are we? It's so unique to us. So if, if it's not a comp competition, why don't we share those experiences a lot more amongst ourselves as a community of faith? Anyway, in 2017, early 2017, I was diagnosed with uh, acute lymphoma, lipid lymphoma requiring urgent chemotherapy. It was a bit of a shock. I think generally, you know, from our experience, if you get a diagnosis with cancer, it's pretty scary. You immediately thought, uh, okay, I thought I was going to live a long time, maybe I'm not. What's the impact? What's the treatment? Sometimes the treatment is almost as worse than, than the disease. So it raises all of that. At the time, I was employed full-time as chief executive of a fairly sizable not-for-profit social organisation that's providing services across the Upper North Island. Big company, big job, loved it. Loved the job, loved the organisation. 50, 60 hours a week was pretty typical, um, big part of my life. All of that was about to stop, just like that. So I went immediately to part-time. Um, the specialist you know, ran all their tests, what they do, I call it staging. And over a couple of months, um, my bloods were starting to improve. Uh, at my farewell, some three months later after the diagnosis, there was a Presbyterian minister there who I knew quite well. And she came up to me and he said, she said, oh, Rod, um, we've just restructured the Northern Presbytery and there's a job for you. I'm thinking, oh, that's unexpected. Uh, she's even considering this, knowing, you know, what's happening to me medically. So... As the process of recruitment continued, my bloods continued to improve and apparently the lymphoma became dormant and I didn't require any chemotherapy at the time. So I was appointed to the role 30 hours a week. That was back in 2000, late 2017. So a presbytery from an Anglican context, so it's quite a bit different. 
So in the PCANZ church, so the national church, there are five presbyteries regionally. Um, the northern, so uh, the northern, we have 80 churches in our presbytery and about 80 ministers. And the presbytery is responsible for its parishes and its ministers. Uh, and the executive officer role is one of overseeing the operations of the presbytery um, and being really a catalyst for change. Because as you know, same as the Anglican Church, overall the traditional churches are declining. So there's choices to either watch uh, the demise of the church or actually do something about it. So we're doing something about it. So my role includes uh, contributing to closing churches, uh, initiating new ministries, new types of formations called seedlings, uh, strategic planning both for the presbytery and for churches, and addressing conflict and a whole range of things. So looking back at that time, it just seems that I was the right person at the right time. A different time, it would be a different person. I'm also thinking I was not, I'm not a Presbyterian and all the other roles of exec officers are filled by ministers and I'm not a minister. What were they thinking? So looking back at that diagnosis and the treatment, I would have continued in the role that I loved. And maybe that was God giving me a bit of a push. Maybe it was. Maybe it was a coincidence. Maybe it was just luck. But my sense is maybe it was God saying, hey, <laughs> you need to do something else. Again, I didn't hear anything. I'm just thinking that from reflection. What's God done in your life, do you think? What God is doing in your life now? Sometimes... From my experience, initially it was really horrible. I thought I was doing a good job in terms of faith, but apparently it needed to be something different. So sometimes the horrible events that happen, we later find out that it was for a higher purpose or a higher need. I think another example in terms of a hand of what hand of God is on us, you know, those of us have been parents. Usually, after a child starts walking, we buy a little trike, you know, because it's fun. And so the first lessons are we've got hands holding them onto the trike, holding their back. The other hand is on the steering to get them used and helping them, you know, we're quite involved. Um, that shifts pretty quickly as the child grows. I'm thinking maybe as a teenager, I'm sure this doesn't happen to the teenagers amongst us, but, you know, 17, 18, they're out. You're thinking, oh, it's getting late, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, where are they? You don't stop loving them, but you're certainly involved differently over time. And they become adults. They might have a family of their own. And you keep loving them. They remain in your love. But how you put your hand on them has to change in respect for them changing and developing themselves. I remember my, my mother, she passed away at age 92, and... At 90, she would say, Rod, you're still my little boy. I'm thinking, oh, Mum, really? She said, yeah, you're still my little boy. <clears throat> Sounds like it might ring a bell or two. So the love aspect, it changes. It changes over time. And so what does it mean to continually love others so they have a sense of looking at ourselves and we and being remained in our love. And I think those we have loved who are no longer with us, I'm thinking about my wife Heather here, you know, she still remains in my love, although she's not physically here anymore, unfortunately. I want to talk a bit about, if I could, uh, some experiences from my role at Presbytery before I move on around the aspects of love. So um, I've learned quite a bit in the last seven, seven and a half years around churches, what works, what doesn't. Um, and from an organisation point of view, churches need to continually refresh, otherwise they get stale. They're still looking like they were in a church of the 80s or 90s, both in terms of the building, how it's set up and the services. And that's great for people who like that sort of thing, um, but you'll see churches who are still doing that and their congregation is generally a lot smaller, quite small, and a lot of elderly people. Um, so it's important to refresh. And I think from a COTS point of view, from what I've heard, you know, there was 
a time when it was a lot larger. And so as COTS now, as, as we're looking forward, particularly with City-to-City uh, -city Australia involved, the temptation might be to say, well, wouldn't it be great to be like we were when this was full? The danger of that is that it's a retrospective look and it may not suit the nature of the conversation now, particularly the multicultural aspect of New Zealand, and it may not no longer fit this uh, Blockhouse Bay community. Because people start at a local church, they go older, kids grow up, they move away, and then they travel back. So there's always a danger of the mixture of the congregation is rarely of the community, it's more people a gathered community, which has an impact on the local sense of connections to the local community, it makes it a bit harder. So uh, it's just a suggestion that it's so important to do a refresh, uh, but the danger is look forward rather than back. I've provided, provided Lorraine recently a, a, a paper that's got 21, I think, options uh, around or aspects of a flourishing church, and I think she's just shared that with Vestry to discuss. Could I have the second slide, please? Um, can you flip to the next one? Um, I've learned too that the aspects of flourishing churches, there's, there's no number that's, that's indicated, and so maybe there isn't a, a magic number. Or well, that, that sense of things happening, some flexibility, some life and some vitality is so important. So one aspect of a flourishing church is being a haven for love, forgiveness and peace. And you have there a list of one of the things or the things that might comprise this haven of love, forgiveness and peace. It requires us demonstrating loving one another. It requires us loving those who come into the door for that first time. It requires us to have some way of indicating to the local community that surrounds us that we are a community who love one another. And loving one another, as I've just mentioned, is not overly straightforward. Not only for the person who's doing the loving because of the things we carry, but also the recipient because they too have all their stuff going on. I'd like to touch around, I look at life sometimes uh, like an ocean. You know, the water could be calm, could be choppy, could have large waves, small waves. If you think about going out into the ocean, you could be with a toe or a foot in the water, perfectly safe, get a little bit deeper, a bit less safe. In Australia, you'll be looking for sharks. Um, there was a joke that my wife, Heather, would tell me about her mother giving her advice as a teenager because there are a lot of sharks in Australia. She said, she'd say, dear, when you're swimming out in the sea, make sure there's someone out in front of you out in the water. <laughs> and Heather one time said, why is that? And she said, well, we're going to get them first. <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's loving one another, actually. <laughs> Um, so life, I think, sometimes can feel like you're in the ocean, maybe in deep water where it's really rough, or you're in a trough between waves and you're choking on the water because it's, you know, it's over, over, overloading you, overflowing you. Um, what happened to me in uh, March of this much of last, no, it would have been May last year. Um, I had all of a sudden developed some problems speaking and it was quite effortful to make myself heard and I'd wake up some nights not being able to breathe, which was pretty scary and I went to the emergency department a couple of times for that. It, it took a while to diagnose, but it seemed that I, my understanding is that the death of Heather uh, just triggered a whole lot of strain on my system. 
So my immune system could no longer hold the lymphoma in place and it had become active. So the swelling in my vocal cords was being caused, was being caused by the lymphoma, which led to uh, six months of chemotherapy, um, two days a week each month for six, six months, and it finished in March. And, and for me, on top of still uh, struggling and worried about life ahead without my best mate, uh, it was a tough, for a tough Aussie bloke, I was not really tough. It was a struggle. Um, and it showed me just some of the huge strengths we have as a community in terms of helping me during that really difficult time. Lorraine, thank you. Um, her prayers and blessings help for me to gain some strength. Truly, that is an example of loving one another. Um, and the life group that I'm part of, just fantastic. So uh, I totally trust them. So as again, striving to match my DNA and being a tough, tough Aussie bloke, I would share quite openly uh, in a distressing way sometimes. A little bit embarrassed still. Uh, learning, I'm learning to be more comfortable about that. Uh, and I remember one night in particular when I was really, I was really struggling, um, that leaving uh, Trish and Ross's home in this bubble of love and prayer, just, just immersed in this, I wasn't expecting it. These things you don't expect, they just occur. And I had the good sense to go, wow, I'm noticing that. That's, that was just such a wonderful thing. It just helped in the coming weeks. I think too, in that way, we, we have a potential here to go beyond loving one another, but to have this as cops as a community, known within ourselves, but also known in the community, that you don't necessarily need to believe what we believe, and maybe we don't all believe specifically the same thing. Uh, we believe in the big things, but maybe some of the detail, we, we don't believe everything. But community know that this is a place of healing. This is a place of love. And they can come and meet us here and we can help them by loving one another and loving them as being us in that sense. It also requires us to be listeners. This is not, in my experience, easily done. Because, and I was a trauma counsellor in Australia for a couple of years and, and what you hear and listen to sometimes is distressing. So there's always a temptation to want to help, to want to intervene, to make it go away, to put a band-aid on what's been, what you're hearing, and that doesn't work. So the listener needs to be able to be still. And the role of the listener with our open heart is to listen, to strive to understand. And that's actually all you need to do because the person telling your story will immediately sense that you are able to cope with what they are saying to you and the engaging sense of they feel with someone else is a great help. You don't necessarily need to do anything apart from being an open listener. That's quite a contrast of how are you, I'm good, and you're already two metres away from each other. Okay. So I'd like to leave you with a bit of a challenge. Um, two actually. One is if, you, if it rings a chord for you around this sense of imagining being immersed in God's love, that's something you might want to take home and daily just imagine that and see what might happen. The other challenge is uh, to make a commitment for you to have a deep and meaningful conversation with someone in this community after the service at least once every two or three weeks. And that to be a different person each time. Thank you, blessings. As Troy comes, there were some words this morning and the prayer time, which um, if they do identify with you, please go and get prayer ministry and communion 
or find somebody who can pray with you afterwards. They were from Jeremiah. I know the plans I have for you. I'm assuming the full verse, so you might like to go find it from Jeremiah 29. There was an image of a banana, and the skin was marked with brown spots. But when it was peeled, the banana was white and firm, a pure whole fruit. And the last one. We come with all our discouragement, burdens and worries, but God is in control. All right. In prayer, um, thank you, Lord, for loving us with an everlasting love. Waymi never ceased to marvel at the goodness of God and the depth of your love for us. Lord, your love is beyond comprehension. It is vast, immeasurable, and unfailing. Let us stand and respond to the goodness of God in song. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been happy. Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God.
reflecting on the love, the invitation to love, to be loved, to love one another. Christ is risen. Is risen Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. It is the joy of our salvation, God of the universe, to give you thanks through Jesus Christ. You said, let there be light. There was light. Your light shines on in our darkness. For you, the earth has brought forth life in all its forms. You have created us to hear your word, to do your will, and to be fulfilled in your love. It is right to thank you. You sent your Son to be for us the way we need to follow and the truth we need to know. You sent your Son to give his life, to release us from our sin. His cross has taken our guilt away. You send your Holy Spirit to strengthen, to guide, to warn, and to revive your church. Therefore, with all your witnesses who surround us on every side, countless as heaven stars, we praise you for our creation and our calling with loving and with joyful hearts. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and just, glory and goodness come from you. Glory to you, most high and gracious God. I invite you to sit as we continue in our prayers. Blessed are you, most holy God. We remember your son as he washed his disciples' feet. I'm among you, Jesus said, as one who serves. Then on that night before he died, he took bread, he gave you thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup, he gave you thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this. It is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you, shed for all, to forgive sin. Do this to remember me. Therefore, God of the past and present, with his bread and wine, we remember your son. We thank you for his coming in glory, and in him we give ourselves to you. Through your Holy Spirit, may we who receive Christ's body be indeed the body of Christ. May we who share this cup draw strength from the one true vine. Called to follow Christ, help us to reconcile and unite. Called to suffer, give us hope in our calling. So we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. For the, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ's body was broken for us on the cross. His blood was shed for our forgiveness. So come, God's people, come to receive Christ's heavenly food. A very warm invitation for anyone who may be visiting us today to come to receive the bread and the wine. If you are, would prefer just to have a blessing, if I can invite you to keep your hands by your side so I know you're not asking for the sacrament. If you would like prayer for yourself or for anyone else, as you come to communion, I invite you to just to place your hand on your heart. I will pray briefly for you and also there will be those here to pray with you also. A very warm invitation. Come, God's people.
Thanksgiving after communion. Blessed be God who has called us together. Blessed be God who has forgiven our sin. Blessed be, blessed be God whose word is proclaimed. Therefore we offer you all that we are and all that we shall become. God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Would you please be seated? A special welcome to you if you are visiting with us today and anyone else that's here every week. Good to see you again. Uh, please join us in the foyer or lounge for some morning tea after the service, and maybe you might like to find somebody and have that deeper conversation with somebody today. Um, I'm going to whip through the notices, because uh, we're, well, not too bad. We'll have a last song after all. So the conferences that are coming up, so there's the ACM, which is the Anglican Community of St. Martin. Yes, sorry, I had a moment. 
uh, Regen Conference. Um, it's coming up on the 8th and the, to the 10th of May, so there are evening sessions available. So don't forget to book that on Eventbrite if you want that. As I'm standing here, don't forget to also book for the Messy Church Conference, and that's on messychurch.nz. It is going to be a good conference. Sorry, it's my one. I'm going to plug it while I'm standing here. Um, even if you are not involved or interested in Messy Church, um, both Dave and Greg are great speakers, and they're talking about science and faith, how it intersects, care our creation, climate change, that side of it. Greg is fantastic at lament and song, and he's an amazing singer and musician, so he's worth coming to see as well. It's on Tuesday the 14th of May. Um, there is a new training available for intercessory prayer, wanting to do it better. It's available after the morning prayer on Monday, which is at 10 to 11, and then they're going to do the training from 11 to 12 for six weeks. So if you would like to do that, Lorraine, Lynn, and Jackie, can you wave your hands? Talk to them. Um, and just make sure we've got enough numbers. Oh, Lynn's in the kitchen, so you see her when you get your cup of tea. Uh, forward planning, just um, a heads up of what's coming up in June. We're going to have a month of prayer. Um, I'm just telling you now so you can start thinking about it. The purpose is to be listening to God for um, what he's doing and what he's planning for us. So I'm telling you about it, but we'll have plenty more to come in the next few weeks. And this is more of a reminder for myself, actually. It's um, Mother's Day next week, so Woman of the Saviour Day. Um, if you need to buy a present, you probably need to do it this week. Um, that's me. All right, Troy, all yours. Any birthdays or celebrations this week? Anyone? We've got chocolate. Yay! Oh, <laughs> Take the sheets of paper out. Yeah. Wave it at them. Yep. It's not our birthday, but a year ago today, you all sang happy birthday to Barry. When he'd had a stroke, two days later it was his birthday. It would have been on Tuesday, and on Thursday this week he died. So thank you to this church for supporting the three of us. We feel very much wrapped in your love. We don't need a chocolate. We <laughs> To be honest, you probably do need a chocolate. <laughs> Chocolates can celebrate good things, and they're really good when they're not so great things. So uh, let's um, just remember the Duncan family as they are celebrating the anniversary of Barry's death coming up this, in this week. Um, don't forget, they like hugs. Um, as we prepare to go out into the world, let's sing our last song. This is a little out of mine. You might like to do the actions. You guys stomp your feet like that? And let's clap together. That's it. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. shine. Alright, keep tapping now. Sounds good. Huh. Everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. Sounds so good. That's called clapping on the back. Feet. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We go in the name of Christ. And we'll see you all next week. Oh, hang on, sorry, there was one notice from the treasurer. Uh, just a reminder that if you want to receive your tax certificate, make sure that he has your email so that it can be sent out. Um, so, yeah, just to see David, wave your hand, David. Him, go see him if you want your tax certificate. <laughs>